Stay tuned. show that time of the month show i'm your host gordon the werewolf and every month i'm gonna give you a triple helping of a werewolf movie review where i give you a movie review the mythos and the facts on a werewolf movie or sometimes just a mythos and a review because sometimes i might not be able to dig up facts about the movie but yeah this month it's a triple threat so Sit back, relax, as I go through, well, like I said, review, mythos, and facts on the 1981 classic, An American Werewolf in London. Let's start with the review. So, plot. The movie follows two American friends Jack and David, who go hiking in the North Yorkshire Moors, where they stop across a strange pub called the Slaughtered Lamb, whose sign doesn't even look like a slaughtered lamb. Anyhow, they meet some strange local Yorkshire people, and they stop and stare at them, uh, because they're strangers in a local country pub. Anyway, they then are told by the locals to stick to the road and beware the moors, because they soon find out that they get attacked by a werewolf. Jack is killed, David's wounded. He then is cursed and is slowly turns into a werewolf. Whilst drama and romance builds, he then turns into a werewolf, and because he's American, he's an American werewolf in London, the capital city of London, of the country England. So, he goes all out transforming until the final act in Piccadilly Circus, where he is gunned down by the police and killed. Likes. I like a lot of this movie. I like the effects that were used in this, both stop motion and practical. I also enjoyed the horror in this and the comedy. The horror in the comedy was funny and I could not get enough of it, especially the scene where he wakes up the next morning after his first transformation with them she-wolves and <laughs> he then steals a kid's balloons and a woman's coat to get back home. <laughs> and that's funny. Of course, we also see Jack. I like the effects used on him to make him look undead, and how he decomposes throughout the length of the movie as he slowly becomes a skeleton. I also like that we didn't see a lot of the werewolf and how they built mystery and allowed us audiences to use our imagination. And I thought that was very creative. Even though we knew it was going to be a werewolf, it was still great to see that he was, you know, that we got to see it in the final act. I like it when we see a little glimpse of it in the tube station at the bottom of the escalators when he kills that rich guy or business guy or whatever. I also enjoy this movie because it's a lot of fun and it's just a great movie to watch. One of the early werewolf movies to give us the modern werewolf transformation where it's absolutely painful. My dislikes. Hmm, there is a few things here and there in the middle act with the romance and the drama, but once we see the werewolf, ha, the transformation is iconic and I absolutely love the shit out of this movie. Ah, yes, an American werewolf in London. So, do I recommend it? Hell yes! It's a brilliant movie, and I say you love it if you're a werewolf lover or a werewolf like myself. Ah, uh, yes. So, my ratings now. <laughs> I'm going to give this movie five full moons out of five. Now to the next part of this show, The Mythos. The mythos of this lycanthrope consists of the curse 
being passed on by a bite or a scratch. Also, the victims who were killed by the creature end up as restless spirits, slowly decaying and, and suffering. And also, this wolf appears to walk on all fours and also be big-eyed and big-teethed and grey-haired. This werewolf, though, only requires the bullets of a normal gun. Silver bullets are not once mentioned in this movie, but the werewolf dies from gunshots, which we see in the final act of this movie. The roles of Jack and David were first considered for Dan Aykroyd as David and John Belushi as Jack, who starred in Landis's previous movie the year before, The Blues Brothers, but they were both unavailable. The werewolf transformation was the first of its kind, as nothing like this had ever been done in a wolf movie before. John Landis thought if a werewolf transformation happens, it should be a long, painful process with the bones breaking and the skin tearing, all mending stronger, making the werewolf transformation a painful thing. Animatronics in stop motion animation were used to create these effects for the transformation. Rick Mayle also appears in this movie as an extra. Along with him was Adrian Edmondson a good friend of Rick Mail's and co-star of the future show at the time, The Young Ones. But only Rick Mail turned up, and John Landis liked his small brief part in it, so it created atmosphere. During the filming of the Piccadilly Circus scene in the final part of the movie, John Landis showed the Blues Brothers to some London cops, and then, after seeing that movie, they were impressed and gave him permission to close off Piccadilly Circus while he films the scenes. They only had one shot at this, so they had to make it count, and it did pay off. Mickey Mouse also makes a cameo in this movie, in the form of a little toy, during the transformation sequence. The songs featured in the movie were songs that were all to do with the moon, such as Blue Moon, Bad Moon Rising, Two other songs were refused by Bob Dylan and Cat Stevens' songs. After seeing this movie, Michael Jackson wanted to be transformed into a werewolf the same practical way. So got John Landis on board to direct the thriller video and help provide the special effects the same way they were used in an American Werewolf in London. And the rest, as they say for that music video, is history. And there you go. Some facts you may or may not know about an American werewolf in London. And there you go. That's it. The review, the mythos, and the facts on an American werewolf in London. So, have you liked this episode? If so, then be sure to share it down in the comments below. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Share with your friends. Feel free to subscribe to the official Random Horror YouTube channel if you haven't already. And hit that notification bell. I have been your host, Gordon the Werewolf, and this has been the Time of the Month Show. So join me next month where I'll be reviewing and giving you a rundown of another werewolf movie or whatever. Until then, don't have nightmares, and let's howl away. Ha! Ah, see ya!